Ah, Into the Woods, one of Sondheim's most beloved and most produced musicals, popular with production teams of all shapes and sizes, from the smallest middle school productions of Into the Woods. <clears throat> Excuse me, of Into the Woods. Into the Woods Jr. Oh, to the perennial Broadway and West End revivals, and now even Disney has gotten into the mix with their 2014 film adaptation. And at the center of each production is the witch, the antagonist villain turned moral bearer of a star vehicle that was asking if we were born wicked long before the rush on green makeup. And so, you already know what the question is. Which witch did it best? So grab your cow, hold on to your beans, and let's go into the woods to find out. You're watching Musical Theater Mash. Whenever I make these videos, they are always contentious. So I've prepared some disclaimers. Got it? Second, in an odd turn for Sondheim, there is no primary discussion of the witch's characterization in either Look I Made a Hat or any of the librettos I've been able to source. So the only explicit primary character description you'll get is from the text itself, and I guess whatever trope of the witch you're going to pull from. For such a complex character, this leaves performers with a lot of flexibility in their interpretations of this role. Third, I have a problem. I have too many witches I want to talk about, and the role has been subtly but importantly rewritten a number of times over the years, so directly comparing different performances just isn't going to work. Instead, I've got a list of eight actresses, ranked from the worst witch to the best witch. You ready? Let's get into it. Number eight. We've got to start somewhere, and at number eight is Julia McKenzie. Now, don't misunderstand, I love me some Julia. She's an adorable, wonderful performer, but this is not her role. She also has the misfortune of only surviving in this single performance clip, where it's tough to get over her Halloween hoopla of an outfit. She sings it fine, but for whatever reason seems very sedentary and inactive. There's no 11 o'clock number there. Coming at you first at midnight, soon you'll see the sky fall. Hey, what a bean. She, she's not even, she's not, look, she's not pulling him out of the bag, like. <sighs> Number seven. Meryl Streep is one of the finest on-screen performers of our time, but something just gets lost in Disney's movie adaptation. She doesn't seem to be singing when she's singing, but actually lip syncing. Her stay with me is nice, but she doesn't have much of a witch voice going on. Don't you know what's out there in the world? Someone has to shield you from the world. I want this character transition between ugly witch and beautiful witch to be reflected in everything, including her voice. Now, don't get me wrong, I love me some Meryl, too. I want to change my name to T-Bone. <laughs> T-Bone Streep. <laughs> I think it sounds good. But She's got this kind of inadvertently flippant attitude when it comes to some movie musicals. It's more prevalent in Mamma Mia for very good reason, but I see it sparkle through in Woods as well. Number six. Did you know Mrs. Cosby also played the witch? Felicia Rashad was an early production replacement for Bernadette Peters and even performs in the Tony Awards that year. As expected, she acts the role very well. She's got a great, 
creepiness about her, an elegance of movement, and is a natural at the motherly aspects of the role. Her singing, on the other hand, needs some work. It's disappointingly pitchy in places, there's some mismatched rhyming vowels, which is a pet peeve of mine. Her ugly witch is better, but it's nothing to write home about. It's the last midnight, so goodbye all. Coming at you fast midnight, soon you'll see the sky fall. Number five. Threatening, powerful, in control, and delightfully cheeky, Vanessa Williams in the Broadway revival brings a breath of fresh air to what is otherwise a kind of trying production. Now, of course Williams knocks it out of the park in the singing department. She does leave a little to be desired in her last midnight. This was the first production to rewrite part of the song as a dark lullaby for the baker's son. It's a wonderful rewrite that it just seems kind of underutilized and tepid in Williams's performance. Number four, Bernadette Peters. It's hard to top your first. Well, the Broadway original. Ellen Foley started with The Witch in San Diego, but she's not on this list. I really like how Peters takes her time with her opening dialogue. What do you wish? It's not what I wish, it's what you wish. I like the comedy she infuses in every line. More than anything, Peters lets us know that act one of this show is going to be a farce. She also fabulously goes from ugly to sexy while still retaining important, consistent character traits. Beyond just being the same actress, you can tell she's the same person. And I mean, just watch this thought-filled pause she takes to make up her mind. Just give me the boy! No! no. No. You're so nice. You're not good, you're not bad, you're just nice. It's brilliant. Now, I do want a little bit more from Peters in her motherly qualities. This is a show about parents and children, after all. She does a fine job in singing Stay With Me, but Something about it feels more like a song between siblings than a song coming from a parental figure. I think a lot of it has to do with her performative, back-of-the-house belting. And that could have been a director choice, but it loses some of that motherly tenderness. Number three, Betsy Jocelyn. Betsy who? Uh, Betsy Jocelyn? Um, uh, Crazy Joanna from the videotaped Sweeney Todd. Yeah, she was a replacement witch during the original Broadway production, and here in Into the Woods, her manic shines. She is mischievous and mysterious, wry and wise. She is my favorite of the original witches. She can get some of that deep gravel that sometimes Peters struggles with, and she matches my expectations of what a storybook witch looks like right away. <laughs> 
Also, she has the most convincing, then give me the boy. We can always give a boy. No, no, for putting hands to blame. Somebody to blame. Fine, that's the thing you enjoy, placing the blame. If that's the aim, give me the blame. Just give me the boy. Like, she is ready to kill Jack. Uh, she also knocks the rap out of the park, tells the story, gets the rhythm, gets the comedy. Really, I think hers is the definitive version of the rap as Sondheim intended. And she had developed an unusual appetite. <laughs> she took one look at my beautiful garden when she told your father. We're down to the wire, aren't we? Only two left. For some of you, the, we may have already passed most of the witches you can name off of the top of your head, so who could be left? Uh, for me, there have been so many choices, and this is such a versatile role. I really do enjoy everyone on this list in their own special way, and it was a significant struggle to put these ladies in any kind of order. but. Our contemporary online BuzzFeed styled world demands lists, and so that brings us to number two. Hannah Waddingham. If you haven't seen the Regent's Park production of Into the Woods, go watch it right after this video. Seriously, you can pay for it, you can watch it online, and you absolutely should. This whole performance is stunning, and Waddingham is no exception. Her stay with me makes me literally scared for Rapunzel. Uh, what did I clearly say? <laughs> Children must listen. No, no, please. What were you not to do? Children must see no. and love. This is a mother not to be reckoned with, who is clearly struggling to find the right way to parent, and then the switch to the tenderness of you don't understand is almost unparalleled. Her children will listen is what absolutely kills me. A lot of times this song is delivered with the same farcical tone as the slotted spoon, can't you, you know. They're like, here's the moral, here's the didacticism, we are a fairy tale, we've gotta get this out. But not Hannah. Hers is the song of a changed woman. Not a moral delivering fairy tale artifice, but another three dimensional character who has learned something very important. Children may not obey, but children will listen. Children will look to you for which way to turn, to learn what to be. Number one. You nervous? I am. Who could number one be? Ooh, I can hear your hate comments brewing already. But actually, I think you're gonna like this choice. Donna Murphy. But children will listen. Children will look to you for which way to turn. 
what to be Careful before you say Listen to me Brilliant in every way. They took the Regent's Park production and brought it to Central Park. Some things may have been lost in the trip across the ocean, but the addition of Miss Murphy makes up for that tenfold. So first off, clearly this is her type. She voiced basically the same character in Disney's Tangled. Skip the drama, stay with mama, mama. Knows best. <laughs> And man, does she have the pipes to get it done! Stay at home, I am home. Who out there could love you more than I? What out there that I cannot supply? The variance, the tenderness, I don't think there is much that matches Donna Murphy's contrast in a line. She sells the baby lullaby like nobody's business. She's got the sexiness of Peters and the wry craziness of Jocelyn and the tenderness and deep character motivation of Waddingham. It is all there. And man, is it stunning. And that's it. What do you think? I'm sure some of you have already let me know down in the comments. A preemptive thank you to those of you who've kept it constructive, and a preemptive really to those of you who overuse your caps lock button. Oh, which performance is my favorite? None of these. Uh, Alexis Michelle's drag transformation is to die for. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, if you liked this video, or even if you really strongly disagreed with this video, you should click that subscribe button. I do videos on all sorts of topics about musical theater, and who knows, maybe one day we'll agree on favorites. Maybe we did today. Great. Awesome. I stand here. You should click that. You know. Or um, it's the end, nearing the end of Sondheim September. I did a lot of crazy stuff in Sondheim September, some better than others, but you can check it out over there. A uh, bunch of great videos. We talk about uh, Anyone Can Whistle. Um, there's a, a brief rundown of Sondheim's Life and Times. Um, I talk a little bit about company. Lots of, it's, you know, I'm all about choices. I want to give you the choices of things to watch. Did you like that? I wrote it myself. Been workshopping it for weeks. It's true. <laughs>